people's lives today. Meet those who have received his miracles. Learn how God's awesome power can be yours. This is Born Anew with your host, Sister Sue Jenkins. Born Anew is an outreach of the Kingdom of God Ministries. And now, the president and founder of Kingdom of God Ministries, Sister Sue Jenkins. Thank you, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Born Anew. Indeed, we praise God for this new day and for all the blessings in life God has given us. Most of all, we're thankful for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Are we most thankful? We're thankful for this day and for our very special guest today, too. We have a Father, George Kaminsky from Fort Wayne, Indiana, who's going to be sharing about his life, a Roman Catholic priest, a man spirit-filled and on fire for God, has come today to share with us what God has done and is doing in his life. We'll have that testimony in a little while. But we'd like to remind you in our viewing audience, you know, uh, we love hearing from you. We thank God for the many who watch the program, and we thank God for each one of you. And those who would like to reach us, you know, we have a 24-hour day prayer line. Plus, if you'd like to write us, we thank you for the many who, who do write us, uh, those who offer encouragement to the ministry, and, and plus whatever needs you might have, you know, that you want us to pray about. We deem it a privilege and a pleasure standing with you in prayer. Our mailing address is Post Office Box 88400. That's Indianapolis, Indiana. And the zip code here in Indianapolis is 46208. So if you just address it to Born Anew, Post Office Box 88400, that's Indianapolis, Indiana, and the zip code here in Indianapolis is 46208. And whenever you do write us, please include your prayer request. We deem it a privilege and a pleasure standing with you in prayer. We want to hear what's on your heart. And, and also, we have a 24-hour day prayer line number, and that number is 317-283. 5800. That number is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, uh, if you call during the course of the program, the time the program is being aired or thereafter, oftentimes the lines are flooded. But we'd ask you to be persistent because we want to hear from you. So you might take time to jot that number down. If, you, if so, maybe later in the day or the week, whenever you'd like to call us, we want to hear from you. We thank God for you. And we thank God for our very special guest today, Father George Kaminsky. Father George, welcome to Born Anew. Thanks, sister. It's good to be here. Well, bless your heart. It's good to have you. And we want to hear about your life, what God has done in your life. He's done some tremendous things. But start at the beginning. Where were you born and raised? I was born in South Bend, Indiana, sister. It was a, it's a very uh, Christ-centered town for the most part. And uh, I was really blessed by having a wonderful Christian family. So I've always really known the Lord Jesus in my life. Mm -hmm. But there was a time in my life when he really reached down and raised me up. And I'd like Praise to tell my story God. today. Praise God. Well, we want to hear from that. But thank God for the beginning that you had, that you had a Christian upbringing, mm -hmm. that the family who knew and loved the Lord. But yeah. share with us how you came to be the person you are today. Well, sister, I was uh, a hardworking kid and really wanted to please my parents and, and please my God. I always had that relationship with the Lord Jesus in my life, but uh, I guess what happened there is uh, when I got to college, I drifted a little bit, as so many of our young people do. Uh, when I was a sophomore in college, I began to get into the drink and some smoking, and, and uh, really, I never really lost touch with the Lord, but He took a back seat to some of the... Uh, material pleasures that are such a, an attractive thing he for our kids today. wasn't first in your life at that time? Not at that point. Okay. Not at that point. And uh, I floundered about for a couple years uh, looking for happiness in ways that, that uh, many people do in sex and in drugs and in, in a thirst for material things and money and, and uh, all that was empty for me. Yeah. And I woke up one morning when I was a senior in college and found that there was a big void in my life that only the Lord could fill. Mm. And so I finally turned it over to him at that point. And then in the next two years, it was an exciting ride, sister. Praise yeah. God. So here you were, you were trying to feel, fulfill that void in your life, not realizing that you were hungry for God, for a relationship exactly with Almighty right. God, which all of us are made for. That's right. Praise God. And yeah. so those other things really didn't fulfill that need, that void. Certainly not. <laughs> Praise God. It's only God who can. But we want to hear, how did that change for you? What did God do to draw you to himself? Well, uh, there was a combination of a, a lot of different things, but one uh, event in my life in particular was when he introduced me to a young lady down in, at, uh, on campus down at IU in Bloomington who was a very spirit-filled woman. Mm. And uh, I fell in love with her, uh, and uh, 
she got me to thinking day by day about the Lord walking with her and that he could walk with me mm -hmm. and uh, very personally and very deeply and um, uh, I fell in love with her right away and and she as she brought me along and into the relationship with the Lord Jesus began to see in me uh, a real powerful presence of the Lord and she fell in love with me and we considered getting married but that's about the time when the Lord stopped knocking on the door for me to become a priest and that was a very that was like a crossroads in my life because I had to I had to for the first time make a tough decision in following the Lord Jesus and, and that tough decision was the Lord was asking me to enter into the seminary and and uh, consider becoming a priest and that meant letting go of that relationship that meant mm -hmm. so much to me in my life. Was it a difficult decision at that extremely time? Extremely so. Extremely I think so. so. Yes. And but the Lord blessed me so much as a result of that. And saying yes to God eh, when He calls you to do something that's heroic, uh, you cannot outgive Him. And I found that following from that decision to enter into the seminary and start studying for the priesthood, the Lord just blessed me in a magnificent way, Praise far God. beyond the sacrifice I made in letting go of that very special Praise relationship God. in my life. Praise God. So it wasn't that this was uh, for the priesthood, that something as a small child you dreamed about going, so, but here and as an adult, the Lord called you That's to right. this life. That's Praise right. Praise God yeah. for those who are called and chosen of Him. Yeah. So as you, as you went through seminary, please continue. Okay. Um, the second summer of my seminary experience, I was in South Bend, Indiana. And you may know that there's a very powerful uh, charism charismatic prayer group in South Bend, the People of Praise. Praise right. And um, there was a young man in the parish that I was assigned to who invited me to the prayer meeting. And at that time as a seminary, I, I wasn't a lot I could do in ministry, so there was a lot of things I was able to try, you know, because I had lots of time. And I went to the prayer meetings knowing that I had nothing to lose, really, uh, but not knowing how much I could gain. <laughs> and uh, the, sec at the second time I went to the prayer meeting on Thursday night, uh, I had the courage to go up and be prayed over uh, for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Praise and God. just like that, the Lord, the the Lord, Lord. anointed me with the gift of tongues. and. Please. Did you know prior to that what you really were asking for? I mean, wh who the Blessed Holy Spirit was, what that would do for life? Not exactly. I, I knew that the people around me at the prayer meeting were really excited about the Lord Jesus and very happy, and, uh, and they were experiencing the Lord with power in their lives. And I wanted that. Mm. And uh, mm. I asked for it, and I think because the Lord knew my heart, He blessed me right away with the gift of tongues. And uh, that was, a, that was a, a confirmation that the Lord was really calling me to the priesthood and anointing me with His Praise Spirit. God. and Giving you a prayer language, giving you a new language to pray to Almighty God. Yeah. Praise God. So other than receiving this new language, how did you know the blessed Holy Spirit was resident within you without measure? How did you know that? I experienced from that day forward a hunger for prayer like I'd never had before. Mm -hmm. The Lord Jesus uh, was my friend, he was my brother, and he, mm -hmm. he was drawing me to an intimate relationship with his father and mine. And uh, so my prayer life just took off like a bird. Praise when I got back to seminary, I just found myself so uh, drawn to the studies, drawn to the prayer, drawn to the works of charity that were part of my experience there. And uh, uh, especially then, about a year later, what happened was... Um, in Fort Wayne the following summer I was going to the prayer meeting in Fort Wayne and and uh, about there was a group of eight people who were part of the core team for the the prayer group uh, took me away for uh, uh, a day up to the lake because I think they knew that they had someone who was ready to be uh, confirmed in the Lord and really made a, a strong witness for him as a priest and they couldn't they couldn't pass up this opportunity. <laughs> so they took me away for a day of prayer and, yeah. and they just concentrated that whole day praying for me, ministering to me. And, and that was uh, probably as close to a Pentecost experience as I could possibly mm. have had. I was, I was just uh, lifted up and my soul was just so filled with joy and, and uh, I rested in the spirit for the first time uh, oh. that summer. And, uh, so the presence of God really in a stronger way came upon you. No doubt. 
Praise the no Lord. Yeah. Praise God. So after that time, could you see your life even more so changed? Was life different for you as you continued on? I would say uh, it, it just keeps getting deeper, sister. I, I, there is no limit to what the Lord can do in our lives. It's like a, a fountain that just keeps flowing up from within. And I, I experience the Lord's power every day in my ministry. Praise God. Yeah. What is he calling you to do in ministry now that you're alive? You know, I know you're a Roman Catholic priest, but in what way is the Lord using yeah. your life for himself? Okay. Well, um, I think the Lord calls us to, to take it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what's down the road because probably if I knew that, I'd be a little bit frightened because the Lord calls us not only to experience his resurrection, but also to experience his cross. Sure. And uh, to embrace both is what my life is all about as, as a, a baptized believer and filled with the Holy Spirit. But um, presently, I'm uh, involved as an associate pastor at a very large parish in Fort Wayne, which provides ample opportunity to minister mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Praise and God. in addition to that, I've been made the vocation director for the diocese, that I'm, I'm out looking for other uh, men and women to serve the Lord in the church and trying to make the call manifest in their lives and helping them to hear the Lord's voice so they can respond to it too. To find true disciples, those who are men and women after God's yeah. own heart. I think that's in the end probably what the Lord was planning all along because imagine the possibilities of having a spirit-filled priest out looking for candidates and, and what the Lord can do with that Amen. and bringing... Um, uh, you know, Father Jarvis, that's where, as you know, that's where the power is, power to witness for God, to live for God, to be in ministry. The Holy Spirit is a principal agent for that. And uh, for somebody who is filled with God's love, who has the love of God first in their life and then want to be used of God, and to have a man like yourself yeah. out looking for people like that, yeah. you know, what a tremendous blessing that can be to the whole church. Oh, no doubt. Praise I see God. the Lord's Spirit really... Uh, blowing over the Fort Wayne area right now. Oh, it's, it's exciting. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> I've only been in the uh, vocation uh, uh, office for three months now, and I'm only beginning to get some contacts out. But what I see is great promise praise for the church God. in Northeast Indiana. Praise God. Yeah. Well, I understand, Father George, the Lord is also, there's other things that you do, though, in that diocese that is part of your responsibility. Is it like, for instance, the lays on? And yes. Uh, one of the most uh, dear uh, assignments to my heart is being the Catholic liaison to the bishop for the uh, prayer groups in the Fort Wayne area. Mm. There are three, three uh, prayer groups in the Fort Wayne area, and uh, all three of them are in the neighborhood of uh, between 30 and 60 people. And uh, they're maturing, mm. and it's a powerful seat of prayer for Praise people and ministry, God. especially I, I see many people who are really um, hungering for the Lord and broken mm. in their lives, looking for the Lord Jesus to reach down and heal them. And they seem to be drawn to the prayer groups, I've noticed, yeah. that Praise so God. many people Praise are looking God. for that. And I'm glad that we're able to provide that yeah. at the prayer meetings at Fort Wayne. Praise God. You know, Father Jarvis, when one does come alive in the Holy Spirit, when one has the, the presence of God in them in such a tremendous way, you, as you're looking on, what difference has, have you seen it make in others' lives, those who've received this new life? Oh, sister, that's probably the, the greatest joy of, of uh, being baptized in the Holy Spirit and being able to minister in the name of Jesus. To see the Lord uh, completely transform a person into a new creation. Yeah. Uh, one, one instance in particular, I, I'll, I have many examples, but there's a young lady that I know in, in Fort Wayne who, who is a victim of uh, sexual abuse and, oh. and uh, a lot of, lot of pain and heartache in her life. And, and the Lord has reached down into her life through the ministry of the prayer group and really healed her of that. And Thank now she God. is so joyed. Praise joyful and, and so healed of that broken yeah. past that she's a powerful witness for the Lord Praise right now. God. And what? the Lord allowed me to be a part of that healing, and I'm really excited Praise about that. Praise God. Yeah. You know, the Lord it has the answer for whatever problem that we have in life, and He's given people to help in that answer, people like yourselves who are filled yeah. with God's Holy Spirit. And as we know today, there's millions of Roman Catholics throughout the country. In fact, I think the number's like over 10 million that are Roman Catholics that are born again, spirit-filled, on fire for God. And we're thankful for that, but we know that there's room for even more, much oh, more to sister. receive. 
there's lots of room and and the Lord is bringing about now I think after uh, 20 years of the charismatic renewal mature leaders mm -hmm. uh, 10 years ago the, the leadership was not yet to the point of maturity and uh, now we're ready for some real fruits of the, of the charismatic renewal because the leadership is now mature and really has the, the gift of discernment uh, perfected in the Lord and, and the decision making is so much more spirit filled and powerful because we've had time to learn about this new life in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Praise God. You know, the Lord God Almighty says that judgment comes first to the family of God, th that the Lord, uh, in a sense, cleans his own house first. And that which is not of God, God allows to go by the wayside. But that which is of God, those, in fact, it says the eyes of God go to and fro throughout the whole earth. God is looking for hearts that are right in him so he might show himself strong in their behalf. And I hear what you're saying about leaders. God is raising up who are of the Lord to be able to not only feed the flock, but to lead his people. Mm -hmm. And so, bless your heart, we thank God for you. Just one question in closing. What do you feel that's on the horizon? I mean, do you feel a greater revival coming to this country, to the world? What do you feel that's on the horizon that God is about to do, or well, is doing? I've already seen it be begin. I was in New Orleans uh, summer before last for the North American Conference mm -hmm. uh, on Evangelization. And there were 40 denominations present. We were 40,000 strong at the mm -hmm. Superdome down there at New Orleans. And the Lord is raising up a mighty army to bring the good news of salvation to the world. Praise God for it. And praise God for you, Father George. And to do that even more so, what we'd like to do is to go to our theme song uh, to Yvonne Wrench as she praises and thanks God for touching Father George's life in such a special and unique way.
praise be to God Almighty. It's the Lord God Almighty who calls us, causes us to be worthy to stand in his presence and serve him. And so we thank God in a special way for Father George Kaminsky here, how God himself called him to the life he now lives. There's different people who are in leadership, especially in the, in the church, and maybe are not called to be where they are. But praise be to God for those who are called and chosen of God, those who not only have a heart for God, those who love and put God first, but those whom God has called to be where they are in the body of Christ. God has a special plan, a special life for each one of us. And oftentimes people see someone in the ministry and think, well, I want to do that, but not necessarily are they called of God to do that. God has a special call in every life. And so sometimes people, we miss out on our call in life if we're not called of God to do what we're doing, you know. And so what a breath of fresh air it is to see somebody who's in the ministry God has called them to be. And we praise God for that. You know, as Father George was saying that uh, he desired more in his life, those things that he went after, first of all, that were not fulfilling that void that was in him. There's a deep void within each one of us. And except the Lord fill it, we'll not find true joy, peace, and happiness as we should apart from God. God wants to not only come into our life, but he wants to be first in our life. We are free moral agents. We can be in life what we choose to be. We're indeed a culmination of our own life's choices. And praise God for those who choose him, those who choose to love and put him first which is indeed the first and greatest commandment, that we put God before all things, not only before all people and everything, but before our own life and our own self are we called to love and put God first. And for those in our viewing audience that maybe say that, you know, I, I, I understand what you're saying, and, you know, I hear the Father's testimony here, and I'd like to one day be used of God in a greater way, or I want to give my heart and life to the Lord, you know, or I'd like to receive this new life in the Holy Spirit that you're speaking of. Whatever your needs are, we want to pray for your needs. So let us do that right now. Praise God. Almighty God and ever-living Father, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. You're our life, our breath, our all in all. Lord, you're all our righteousness. It's in you that we stand complete. And so, Father, as we come before your throne of grace through the blessed shed blood of Jesus, Lord, we come with all those in our viewing audience who hunger and thirst for holiness. Those who say, yes, I lay hold of that prayer that they're praying for me. Uh, Lord, I lay hold of that prayer. Include me. I want to come to know you better. I want to renew and rededicate my life to you, Lord. And yes, I'd like to receive your blessed Holy Spirit of love. Father, for these we pray. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, that we bind every force of hell that would come against these people. And we bind your forces, evil one, and we loose God's perfect will. Lord, that you would flood them with your light, your life, and your love. And Lord, may the end result of you flooding them with yourself, Lord God, with your love. Not only that they'd be used in ministry and might manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but Lord, in a far greater way that their lives may bear forth fruit as being Christian, that they may be those ambassadors of love and compassion that you call each one of us to be. And Lord, we pray for other needs our viewers have, whether it's a healing, they need a miracle of healing, or in their finances, family problems, Lord God, whatever the needs, we pray that every need be met by your own perfect will. And Lord, we, and we pray that all people always give you all praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving for what you're doing have done and will do, for we ask it in the precious name of Jesus, the risen Christ. Praise be to God. You know, the Lord is good. He hears the prayers of his people. His ears are attentive to our cry. But, you know, the Lord wants to hear from you on an ongoing basis. It's right that we should intercede in prayer for you. But God wants to hear from you personally. He loves you with an everlasting love. And as he calls you to be, you know, in his work, he calls you to seek him on a daily, ongoing basis. If God can give us 24 hours in a day, surely, surely we can give him back at least an hour a day in prayer alone with God, prayer not interrupted with God. As we go into our prayer closet, praying according to his perfect will, scripture says when we do, he hears us. And we have that which we petition him for. But, you know, as we will... God draws closer to those who draw closer to him. And as we come before his throne of grace on a daily, ongoing basis, we'll begin to hear from God as we've never heard from the Lord. You know, as we spend time alone with God, at least an hour a day, and we ask God to speak to us, God is faithful. If we'll discipline ourselves to pray at least an hour a day, that's minimum time, not maximum time, but at least an hour a day, and ask God to speak to us, surely he will. Not only does he speak through the still, small voice deep within us, He'll speak through the audible voice, through sacred scripture, through circumstances, through other individuals. He's not limited as to how he can speak. We're talking about a living God. The God of sacred scripture lives, is alive, and we praise God for that. That We don't have to pretend in God, but Almighty God is alive.
you know, and he wants you to know, wants you to know him in a real and personal way. But as you're faithful and discipline yourself to at least spend that time alone with him, expect to hear from me. Expect to see your life change for the better. And that not only spend time alone with him in prayer, but to read the sacred scripture. You know, the sacred scripture is true from cover to cover, and we can base our life and existence on God's word, his written word, as well as the word made flesh, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And then also, if you're not already in a body of believers, a church or a fellowship, the Lord would call you to be, you know, to get into a body of believers and, and to get a busy on doing what God is doing. God is doing a tremendous work in the world today, and he has a part for each one of us to be about his work, the Father's work. You know, it's his work that people be saved and set free and healed and, and be blessed. God would that each one be used of him in a special way to reach other people, to affect others' lives. Well, maybe you're saying, well, I'm an elderly person. I can't go out and witness. But surely you can pray. There's something God would have you to do to be a part of his vineyard. The Lord loves you. He loves you. And he wants you to draw closer to him and to put him first in life. That is the first and greatest commandment. And as we do that, that alone we can begin to see our lives change before our very eyes. Praise be to God, the Lord is good. He gives everybody a chance to come to know Him in a real and personal way. He's calling you this day. Know that we'll be remembering you in ongoing prayer. We're all out of time for this particular edition of Born Anew, but hopefully we we'll see you next time. God bless you now. Bye-bye. God bless your Father. Thanks, bless your heart. <laughs>